Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Mick O'Connell. I'm one of the directors here at Interpol, and I have the privilege to speak to you this morning on behalf of the Secretary General. And I'd like to welcome you to the fifth international expert meeting on genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. This is the third time that Interpol has held an, its international expert meeting at its headquarters here in Lyon, in France. For those of you that were present, Norway was kind enough to host the last meeting in 2009. Interest and attendance continues to increase, and since our first meeting in 2004, today we have 147 participants, representing 44 countries and 21 international, European or specialised organisations. And I thank you for attending, knowing that your diaries and agendas are no doubt, like many, very, very busy at this time of year. <coughs> But the origin of Interpol's commitment to justice in the context of genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity can be traced even further back. As the world's largest police uh, international organisation, bringing together over 190 member countries, we've actively supported our members and international criminal tribunals in the location and apprehension of criminals wanted for genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity since 1994. This was just a few months after the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and first ad hoc international tribunal since the Nuremberg trials had been established. Since then, Interpol has worked relentlessly to strengthen its alliances in this realm by concluding cooperation agreements or other formal cooperative arrangements with the ICTY, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, the Office of the Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court and the Special Court for Sierra Leone. Regarding the ICC, the value of using Interpol's tools and channels to transmit requests for cooperation between the ICC and states was explicitly referred to in the Rome Statute. Aside from the international nations, Interpol was the only international and intergovernmental organisation expressly cited in this statute. Further recognition of Interpol's role was expressed in August 2003 when the UN Security Council adopted a resolution on the com completion strategy for the ICTR and the ICTY. The resolution included a call to all states to cooperate with Interpol in apprehending and transferring persons indicted by both ICTR and ICTY. The recent past has seen Interpol assisting and supporting the international criminal tribunals and courts, as well as national authorities in achieving extremely important results in their investigations on genocide, crimes against humanity and war crime cases. In concrete terms, international investigations are enhanced and prominent war criminals and mass atrocity perpetrators have been identified, located and brought to justice. This is achieved through dedicated projects aiming to locate and arrest the fugitives for specific, serious international crimes, such as the Rwandan Genocide Fugitives Project, and to close the information gap and increase the amount of intelligence available on individuals under investigation for genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes, as in Project Basic. Since the creation of the Rwandan Genocide Fugitives Project in December 2007, Nine individuals wanted by ICTR have been arrested, while 22 fugitives wanted by the Rwandan authorities have also been located and arrested. Let me give you two examples, similar in their successful outcome, but increasingly and interestingly different in how the result was achieved. The first relates to Bernard Mungishari, wanted by ICTR for serious offences to the Geneva Convention, subject of an Interpol Red Notice, who was arrested in Nor North Kivu in the D Democratic Republic of Congo on the 25th of May 2011. This arrest was the result of close cooperation between the Fugitives Unit based here in Interpol and the ICTR tracking unit. The second case is even more recent, on Friday the 19th of, of October 2012, authorities of the Democratic Republic of Congo 
arrested in the Katanga region, the fugitive uh, Vedaste Bungwahi, wanted by NCB Kigali, uh, Kigali for complicity in genocide and crimes against humanity. What must be underlined here is the key element that led to this arrest. The fact that the right piece of cross-border intelligence had been available at the right time and the right place to proceed with identification and detention of this individual. Without it, today we will probably be discussing yet another missed opportunity. The entry of the subject into the territory of DRC was in fact detected on the 12th of October by an Interpol major event support team deployed in the DRC from the 10th to the 15th of October to enhance security measures for a major event that was taking place down there. It was a single hit from the cross-checking of immigration records against Interpol's Global Wanted Persons database that enabled the preliminary identification of the subject. Immediately after that, close collaboration between our fugitive support team here, the Command and Coordination Centre, which was managing the IMS team, and the National Central Bureau in Kinshasa and Kigali, and the Rwandan Genocide Fugitives Tracking Team, in the National Prosecution Service of Rwanda, led to the provision to DRC authorities with the international arrest warrants and additional identification materials allowing to the arrest of the suspect. Yet as I speak today, nine fugitives wanted by the ICTR, all subject of Interpol red notices, still remain at large, while 131 red notices issued upon the request of NCB Kubali are still outstanding. Let me now shift to a different region, but an equally challenging setting, the post-Balkan war environment. The most prominent criminals involved in the conflict have been arrested and are now standing on trial, but I would like to highlight the support provided by Interpol to the operation that led on the 18th of January 2011 to the Israeli police arrest in Jerusalem of Alexander Chekhovich. Subject of an Interpol Red Notice wanted by the Bosnian authorities. It is alleged that this subject, as a member of the 10th Sabotage Detachment, participated in the killing of a group of between 1,000 and 1,200 Bosnian civilians in Banjevko, the municip municipality of Bosnia-Herzegovina, on the 16th of July 1995, after the fall of Srebrenica. <coughs> The Interpol Fugitive <coughs> Investigation Subdirectorate has been collaborating with Israel and Bosnia Herzegovina authorities in order to support the location of the individual in Israel and his provisional arrest. In particular, our team here coordinated actions against, between the Israeli Ministry of Justice, the Bosnia and Herzegovina War Crimes Prosecution Service, and the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia in order to provide Israeli authorities with investigative, historical and legal background, requested to have the individual provisionally arrested with a view to his extradition in Bosnia. This case highlights the pivotal importance of information sharing between international tribunals and national authorities, with the aim to bring any possible investigative gaps closer together. Once again, Interpol can, and whenever requested, will assist all of its 190 member countries in facilitating the flow of key intelligence across its national borders or local agencies. This is why Interpol was conceived in the first place, and this is the principle embodied in one of our trademark tools, the Interpol Red Notice. The value of Interpol's Red Notices for the crimes of genocide, war crimes or crimes against humanity is clearly recognised by the international law enforcement community. Presently, we have 842 valid red notices and 355 dive fusions for these style of crimes. Yet Interpol's role is by no means limited to the issuance of notices. Our operational services also include a secure global communication system that enables access to our copious international databases. Valuable resources for investigators and prosecutors accessible in real time at negligible cost, with enormous potential for ongoing investigations. In terms of human capital, Interpol's Fugitive Investigation Unit remains extremely active 
working closely with international recognised criminal tribunals, its prosecutors, other international organisations and non-government organisations. It's developed a cohesive international network of experts, many present here today. The unit has evolved and expanded in recent years, and I would like to highlight two particular areas. Due to the complex nature of the investigations, there's been an increase in the number of specialised units working in the field. <clears throat> in support of this welcome development, Interpol organised a two-week-long intensive training for nearly 60 specialised officers in, to, in January 2009. In October 2010, in collaboration with the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, and thanks to the personal support of Mr Ding, at the time Registrar of the Tribunal and the Prosecutor, Justice uh, Hassan Lalo, a second training session was organised in Arusha, Tanzania, in ICTR premises. More than 30 law enforcement officers and specialists from 16 countries attended the 10-day course, with training provided by a wide range of experts from United Nations tribunals, the International Criminal Court, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the International Committee of the Red Cross and other international institutions and national specialised agencies. The course was also aimed to prepare in participants for possible collaboration with peacekeeping forces that might be deployed in different countries, as well as on how to integrate national investigations with investigations carried out by international courts and tribunals. Based on the positive feedback we received, we've already started planning to hold similar sessions in 2013. Interpol's Fugitive Unit is also committed to enhance its project basic, with the aim to increase the effectiveness of Interpol in supporting the investigation of serious international crimes. In this framework, the unit is committed to assist the criminal tribunals in dealing with the challenges of the international nature of these offences and the number of different investigative bodies involved. Our Fugitive Unit is also promoting the use of modern and innovative police tactics, such as financial and high-tech forensic investigation to trace assets and extract relevant data from computers and other mobile devices, as well as enhancing the integration of social network analysis into investigations. In closing, I believe there's little doubt that in the last 18 years there have been significant achievements in the fight against genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity. Yet plenty of work remains. For Interpol, for its 190 member countries and for all of you here today. For the short term, this conference has set an engaging agenda designed to spur discussions and exchanges amongst some of the top experts in this field gathered here today. I encourage all of you to exploit this invaluable opportunity to its fullest over the next few days. Over the long term, here is our pledge, Interpol's pledge, to all of you. Our commitment to the cause remains firm and is one which all of you will be able to count on for the years to come. I thank you for your time. I wish you all the best over the next two days and I look forward to sharing some of the discussions with you. Thank you.